Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 47. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 5.xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're going to start on the, sh the sheet EVSD expected value standard deviation. And we've got to talk about the mean and standard deviation for a discrete probability distribution. Now, here's the thing. We're often given a frequency distribution like this and some relative frequencies. This is for our discrete probability distribution. And we need to calculate the mean and standard deviation. And so this video will see how to do that. Let's go look at our PDFs right here. Here's the formula, expected value. We use Greek letters, mu, the mean calculation is the sum of all the x's times the probability. Now this is a weighted average. It just means a frequency distribution is summarizing some data points. And in this discrete probability distribution, we'll have the, and if we go back and look over here, we have an x value here. This is uh, for the example we looked at before. X equals number of operating rooms in use in one day. So one, two, three, four. And here's our relative frequency. So we can actually calculate a weighted average that will actually be just as if we had the raw data and calculated our mean. And similarly, we'll have a similar calculation for standard deviation. So this is our formal formula. It's called the expected value the long run average of the random variable. Now one reason it's called expected value uh, or the long run average is we're talking about discrete variables here. And when we calculate an average, we might get 2.9. So if you're selling cars, right, you can sell one or two or three or four cars, but the average might be 2.9. Again, if this is a weighted average, and again, it doesn't have to be the value I just mentioned that. Uh, here's our calculation for standard deviation. There's our deviation. We're going to take the x minus the mu we calculate up here, our expected value, square it, and then multiply it times the probability. Take the square root, and that'll give us the standard deviation. The standard deviation, of course, is the spread in the data, the variability, the dispersion, how fairly does the mean represent its data point? That's what standard deviation tells us in large part. So let's go and see how to do this. Now here's our table here. We have x equals number of operating rooms in use for one day. We could have one to four. This was from our example four where over the last 20 days we actually did a uh, watched every day. And these were the possibilities we saw. Our frequency, three times the room was used. The, only one of the four rooms in the hospital were used. Eight times three of the four hospital rooms were used. Four times four were used, et cetera. Now, this is what we get usually when we have a discrete probability distribution. We get our x value and our probabilities. In uh, past chapters, both uh, three and two, we had frequencies, right? Now, this is our expected value. And our formula is x, that's our random variable, times the probability. And then we add them up. But if we had the frequencies and the actual uh, x here, we could, just as in chapter 3, calculate our weighted mean, which of course will be equal to the, the mean if we had all the raw data, right? So what did we do back in chapter uh, three? We did some product, because here's how many times one occurred. Three times one plus five times two plus eight times three. So back in that chapter, we learned how to use the sum product function. We want this column times this column and then added. So we simply highlight bloop, comma and bloop. Now that gives us the total in the numerator. We have to then divide by the count. And that is exactly how we did weighted uh, average in chapter three. But again, we're not going to usually have this table. We're going to have these two. But watch this. We'll get the same exact answer, whether we 
did it from our frequencies, from the original data set, or our new formula we're learning in this chapter, the sum of x times all of the uh, probabilities. So here we go, equals our x times our relative frequency or probability. So I enter that, I copy it down, and lo and behold, when I add these up, Alt equals, I get 2.65. That is our expected value. That means for planning here, the hospital can plan on average that there will be 2.65 rooms used per day. All right, now let's notice something else. When we calculated this, we had our x and our probability. Notice blue times green. Enter, blue times green. So we're multiplying two columns and then adding. Well, just as we did down here, as soon as you see that, you realize this extra column is not really needed. You can skip to the chase here and just use some product. And actually, the textbook does show you how to uh, use some product here. We've seen this a couple times so far. Absolutely awesome. Whoops. Our x values, our random variable, times our probabilities. This multiplies the two column. That's the product part of sum product. And then adds, that's the sum part. All right, now our next calculation, we're going to have to take, do a couple steps. And we're going to do a couple steps and do it longhand. And then we'll similarly see how to do it with sum product. Now let's go over to our PDF and remind us ourselves of the formula. So it's the uh, particular x minus the mu squared. We're going to do that in two columns. Then we have to multiply all of the deviation squared times the probability, and then add them up, take the square root. All right, we're going to do this in a couple steps, and then we'll see how to do it all together in one. First step is the particular value. That's our x minus our mu. I'm going to select this one right here in F4. Now this is the de these are the deviations, right? When we did this um, chapter three, of course we always checked. We added up all the deviations to make sure they're equal to zero. But that only works if you have all the values. We do not have all the values here. So when we add these up, we are not going to get zero. So that's not a valid check when you're calculating, making this calculation from the probability distribution. It's a valid check when you do the raw data, which actually we will do in this video at the end just to prove that all of this kind of uh, may, works. Now we take our deviation and we square it, caret, that's shift 6, 2. Now we have to take this column and multiply it by our column of probabilities. OK, so that's. We have the, our column of individual values right here. Now we're about to do in the sum part. So right here, we Alt equals. That gives us our variance. Now variance is fine. You can compare if you're going to use this and compare it to other similar uh, hospital room usages. You could, could use variance, but of course, that's a squared unit. So we want to bring it back down with the square root. And so there it is. There's our standard deviation calculated from a discrete probability distribution, 0.9638, whatever that is, 3068014. Now, let's think about how to do this. And in the textbook, the way they do it is um, they have you calculate out to here. Or they do these two steps in one column, and then they use the sum product. I want to show you how to just just as we did with our expected value, right? We notice there's a column times a column, multiplied and then added. Notice we're just using our just the relative frequency or probability in our variable, right? So that's pretty convenient. And actually, uh, in uh, lots of fields like finance, for example, this is a very common calculation. So you do not want to, you're doing this all the time, so you don't want to continually have to use a lot of cells. So to know how to multiply two columns and add is very handy. The expected mean is quite easy. The standard deviation is a little bit harder. So let's talk about it. Um, well, right he here, we got our x. Um, and in this column, we had to subtract 
the same value. So notice the blue one's moving, but that one's locked every time. right? So it's a column of values minus a one particular value. Well, actually, you can do that uh, calculation inside of the sum product. But let's go to the next column and notice what we did then. Oh, then we took that and squared it. Once we had this column right here, what did we do? Oh, then it's a straight, a second straight sum product. It's this times this. So, and this times this, and this times this. And that's how the textbook shows you. It has you create this column, and then it says now you have a column of probabilities or relative frequencies, and this column of deviation squared. Now use sum product. Let's see if we can do it all in one. Equals sum product. Right now, the first part, remember, we actually have to do the x minus one particular value. So watch this. We can simply highlight our x's and subtract our expected value there. Now, when we do this, this, this is called an array calculation because this subtraction we are used to in, in most people doing Excel, and certainly in this class, we're expected, we usually take one cell minus another cell. As soon as you take a bunch minus one, it's called an array calculation. Now, the cool thing about sum product is it's programmed. It'll handle that. Now, I do want to show you that this calculation does deliver four values that equal exactly what you see in this column. And there's a cool trick. You can take a part of a formula and highlight it. And if you hit the F9 key, that's the evaluation key. So I'm going to hit F9. You got to be kidding me. Right inside my formula, I don't need this extra column. I can just do the calculation right here. So I'm going to Control Z. Now, what's, that's that column, but we need to square it. Well, if you remember your order of operations, the caret is always calculated before the minus, and we need to force the minus to be calculated first. So we simply put that in parentheses to force the minus, and then we caret 2. Now you can do that same trick right here, F9. Oh, that is so cool. It's exactly the same. Control Z. When you F9 to see it, you have to immediately undo it. Now it's simple. It's this column times this column. Then you get these numbers. So let's try it. Array 1 we just created. We had to do some fancy footwork for that. Comma to get to the next array. And we highlight this. Close parentheses. Now, this right here will give us, and if we highlight, um, actually we can't do that, but the inside, the sum product now will multiply these two and then add them. So our result will be this not 0.9275. So watch this, I'm going to hit enter. Totally awesome. All in one cell. None of this extra here. Now, no problem. And I remember learning this in statistics and finance and other uh, when I was learning it. Doing this longhand method is awesome. But once you get the hang of it, you do it a bunch of times, then you do it this way. All right, well, that's not really, really what we want. We want to do the square root. And we're certainly allowed to just wrap that sum product result inside of the square root. And so there we get our square root. Now, this is what we're learning in this chapter because we're given random variables and some probabilities. And we just saw how to calculate mean and standard deviation. I want to show you what would happen. I want to prove to you that these numbers are legitimate when we do it from uh, discrete probability distributions. If I scroll over here, what I did was I just, um, and we I did this in an earlier video for uh, Bayes' theorem where I, I took the frequency distribution and extrapolated the original data set. Well, this one's easy. One, list it three times. Two, list it five times. That's all I did. So now, let's go ahead and calculate uh, first the mean of the data, so average. There's our 2.67. Oh, well, look at that. We saw it a couple ways here, right? We're learning this new formula for the mean 
from a frequency distribution, um, from a discrete probability distribution. We saw how to do it with the formula. We saw how to do it from the weighted mean, and now we saw how to do it from the original raw data. Next, we can certainly calculate our deviations. F4 to lock that cell reference down. Double click and send it down. Equals this. Oh, and let's come down here. And I did it one too far. And this is the raw data, right? Remember, right here, not going to work when you're doing it from the actual uh, discrete probability distribution. But down here, this is the raw data. So it better be equal to 0. And sure enough, it is. We calculate our deviation squared. Relative cell reference, caret 2. Now we come down here in our standard deviation. Well, I'm going to add all these up first. OK. So what we're doing here, that's the uh, deviation squared. When we add these, that's the step before variance. To get variance, we have to divide. Now this is the all the data, so where you're going to use the population calculation is just n. So I'm going to divide by, and I should have done a separate calculation. I don't have calc count done anywhere. So watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to leave that sum there just for a moment. I should have done my count up here, but OK, I'll do it down here. Equals count. And I'm going to count the original data. So now I have the sum of the deviation squared divided by my count. That gives me the variance. And I think if we look over here, 0 0.9275. That was from our uh, discrete probability distribution up there. Exactly the same. We have a different formatting here. Now we can calculate. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to put var here and then standard deviation down here. Now we can do square root 0.968. Exactly the same whether we did it from the original raw data or our discrete probability distribution. Now, one last thing. If we were to use the incorrect function here, the sample standard deviation on our raw data, we get a number that's too big. But if we use our population, we will get the exact same answer. All right, so very important, uh, the mean and standard deviation for a discrete probability distribution. And we did some extra work here looking at the raw data set just so we could see that these kind of do make sense. All right, see you next video.